What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie. Uh, this is part two of my ranking and reviewing Eric Clapton's live albums. Uh, this is the 90s and the 2000s up through 2009. 2010 is going to be included in the 2010s. Um, I think I got them all. We get weird when we get into Clapton's live albums because we have original releases and later decades like extra releases. I think I have the six that qualify um, in these two decades. If I miss something, please just let me know in the comments. Um, I'm not doing anything he sort of curated like those those like live Crossroads live albums, which a whole bunch of different musicians play on them. Um, and Clapton's only on a handful of tracks. Um, unless Clapton is like either part of the band, like he's, it, none of that just guest stuff. Um, but I might get those at one later point in time. If people who know them, I would be listening to them for the first time. I haven't checked out any of those sort of like those, uh, compilations that he's done of like live festivals that he's curated and stuff like that. So I don't, I, I, I might check those out. Uh, so I got six and that's it. How'd we get here from Frank? Bunch of people in Frank's band played with Clapton throughout the years. Plus God, God, I see God rolling in for the money. So there we go. Those are the two reasons we need. All right. Yeah. Six albums and talk about them, put the list on the screen. Then I'll show you where these six fall among the other live albums I've done from the seventies and eighties. All right, let's get on to number six. Uh, my least favorite out of this decade, number six, is Unplugged. Um, the original version, there is a remastered and expanded version, which I'll talk about later, that I don't think was believed until, t was not released until uh, much later, 2000, right? 2015 or 17 or something. It was released after this decade. Um, and uh, this came out in 1992. It's from its MTV Unplugged performance. And uh, 2013 is when the other one came out. So I'll be talking about that in the next video. And like from the get-go, I, I don't like Unplugged. Acoustic is one thing. Unplugged is something else. Unplugged implies that it was electric to begin with. And then we unplugged and then played it acoustic. Um, I will never forgive. I, I definitely haven't as of this point in my life. Maybe before I, I, I pass away at whatever age that is, I will come to terms with... Uh, this version of Layla, which I still think is one of the worst things ever. And to be stuck hearing that across pop culture for like years and years and years, just that beginning to uh, just to hear the beginning of that on acoustic guitar, just, it, it, I do not like it. It, it. it is, it ruins, I think one of the greatest rock star songs ever in which the emotion of the moment and the emotion of why the song was written and the emotion of the room it was created in and just the energy and the rawness and everything about the original Layla, it should not have been played. It should not have been unplugged. It should not be here. I want to live in a world where this doesn't exist. Um, that, it has to be number six because of that. Other than that, I just generally don't care about acoustic stuff. Um, I can't say it's a complete loss. I want to say like, the second half of it, I kind of warmed up to. I don't own this. I did get it from the library. I've been listening to it a couple of times in the car just to make sure my opinion is right about what I believe. Yeah, I don't like it. I do think the running on faith actually worked. Um, I thought the Alberta cover really worked. These are on the latter half of the set. I thought San Francisco Bay Blues had a really nice, fun energy about it that I liked. Plus there was a kazoo in there, I believe. Um, and Old Love is such a fantastic song um, that, yeah, the Old Love is actually pretty good. Other than that, I don't want to hear Frank, I don't want to hear Clapton doing acoustic stuff. Kind of reminds me of like, my opinion about Clapton doing acoustic stuff is like, if I was like, I went to a show in Austin. Austin's about 80 minutes, 85 minutes from me. Uh, so I drive home a lot at like 1.30 in the morning after club shows. Um, if I went to a club show and was really tired when I got out of there and I went to the grocery store or went to the convenience store to buy Quaaludes and some warm milk, that to me is the equivalent of Clapton Unplugged. He, his, tra his trajectory career-wise is already like going this way towards like, towards like meditative states of peacefulness. You don't need to unplug him. Electricity was the one thing that was saving him. And I love Clapton, huge Clapton fan, obviously making these videos, but I don't like this album. I understand why people do. 
I do think it sounds good. I do think if you like acoustic stuff, you might like this. Tears in Heaven, some good blues songs. Let, uh, yeah, that's my number six, Unplugged. Uh, number five is Eric Clapton's Rainbow Concert, uh, the remastered and expanded version, which came out in 95. I enjoyed the original. Six songs, just this random selection of six songs from the show. I think the energy is good. There's some flaws with the release, but I think those flaws add to like the endearing character, the rawness of it, the sort of like, hey, let's get together all these people and put together a show for Eric aspect of the album. Talk about it in the previous live video. Um, and this is an expanded and we have eight additional songs, shorter versions of, I think, every single song that's on the original one. In some instances, like two and a half minutes shorter. Um, but I don't think any of the stuff that's that's been added is necessarily necessary. Opens with Layla. I think it's a rush Layla. Doesn't need to be there. The, the coda, they play the coda, but it feels almost like... It doesn't feel like there's an intensity to the first half or it's a long enough jam at the first half. It doesn't feel like the code is necessary. Like it feels like it's necessary on the original studio version. Like that emotion, we have to have this, this thing to channel our emotions through. It just comes across as eh. Uh, badge is shorter, but I love the badge. It's on both. Uh, I like the blues power. I think the blues power is fantastic. Really good rock energy, kind of dirty, uh, a really awesome really great version of that. Um, and the last note of badge is sort of the, the weird kind of disjointed lead into blues power. So that's a nice segue there. Um, I don't know if it's a production thing or it actually happened live. Uh, we get roll it over, but a shorter version of roll it over. Um, we get little wing, uh, but a shorter version of little wing. Uh, we get bottle of red wine, which is a fun song. Um, after midnight, um, this after midnight just kind of didn't really do anything for me. It was just kind of an after midnight. Um, it's also on the original. It's probably the weakest track on the original, um, but it's shorter here. It's kind of that straight rock version that kind of, it's an interesting version, right? It's an interesting kind of slow, steady thing that kind of wins me over at the end, but it's not my favorite version. Maybe the one flaw in the original release for me. Uh, Bell Bottom Blues, which just does not do it for me. It just sounds kind of like it drags. The Bell Bottom Blues I'm not connecting with. Uh, Presence of the Lord, which is shorter than the original version. Uh, Tell the Truth, love to hear that. I think it's a pretty standard Tell the Truth. Pearly Queen, shorter than the original. Key to the Highway, kind of a standard Key to the Highway. Kind of chill, maybe a little laid back. Uh, we get a Let It Rain that does have a drum solo. Um, and then we get a Crossroads, which just kind of feels forced and just, yeah, I don't know. I, the stuff that was added, it's not doing it for me. I listened to the original six song LP way more than I listened to the remastered thing because I think everything on the six song, even the After Midnight, I don't think is bad. Um, it's just my least favorite on there. Um, but I think everything else is just absolutely fantastic. So yeah, but it's number five. Definitely better than anything Unplugged. And it does have those six songs and Blues Power is pretty good. But yeah, that'd be my number five, the remastered version of... Eric Clapton's Rainbow Concert. Number four is 24 Nights. Stuff is getting good now. This is an inconsistent, but at times great live album. Um, came out in 91, recorded in 90 and 91, and Clapton did a run of shows in uh, the Royal Albert Hall um, and he had a bunch of sh couple shows that were rock shows. I think he had a really small lineup, might have been a four piece on the rock shows. He had a blues set of shows where he did blues songs, and then he had an orchestral set. Um, and this is material from those different sort of performances. Um, different bands on different nights, different guest artists. Um, on one of them, he had like the National Philharmonic Orchestra. Um, there is an expanded version of this, which was released in last year, uh, 2023. Um, I will talk about that eventually. Um, but even the original two disc release, which had 15 songs, um, I think the other one has something like, like what, 18, 32, has like well over 40 songs, um, has some really good moments. The interesting thing is, it's inconsistent, and those inconsistencies start off both discs and kind of like, uh. So it's weird for someone who's like, if you're testing it out for the first time, make it through those first two songs um, before you like make a decision. 
Um, looking at it, I wasn't too fond of the set list at first, only because it looked like some old cream stuff that just feels like I had seen Clapton enough time in the 80s where I think the stuff that least excited me were his versions of like White Room and Sunshine of Your Love and even Layla to some extent. Like for some reason, that stuff didn't connect with me as much as some of the other stuff. Here, that's actually his guitar playing is so fantastic that the performances are coming through. So you get, I don't know what's on the rock nights and what's on the other nights. Um, I'm, I think each of the discs is, I think the first disc is just rock night stuff and just blues night stuff. And the first song is Badge. I don't like this arrangement of Badge. He completely undersells the that part. He like downplays that, like the dynamics on that are horrible. I think it's just, I do not like this. I love Badge, one of my all-time favorite Clapton songs. I don't like this version of it at all. But um, whoever's on piano, who is on piano in this? Um, in the beginning of Badge, um, whoever's on piano, who is the pianist, for the uh, for this, oh, is it Greg Philganis? Okay, I think it is just Greg. Um, he is playing the uh, the uh, Glad, the theme from Traffic's Glad. Dun, 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 dun. So when they start badge and they drop into that, Greg is in the back going, dude, dropping the the Glad riff highlight of Badge for sure. One of the highlights of the entire release. Really, really neat little like, I don't know what it is, in Easter egg, I guess it would. Um, that's followed by Running on Faith. I like the Unplugged version. This version does nothing for me. Uh, then we get White Room, which is surprisingly good. I think the White Room itself, the performance of the song feels a little draggy. Doesn't quite have that energy of like, you know, the original, uh, but the guitar playing is fantastic. Um, Sunshine of Your Love is a little over the top indulgent because it is a set closer. I believe it's like they would close the main set of the rock show or it was an encore number in the rock show. Um, so it has that overindulgent feel to drop in the middle of a CD. Um, but the playing, the guitar playing is pretty good. Um, then we get a bunch of a run of blues songs. Um, Watch Yourself, Have You Ever Loved a Woman, Worried Life Blues, Hoodoo Man. I think they all sound good. There's nice piano playing. There's nice soloing. Awesome guitar. Um, just really, really good Eric Clapton blues. Um, just really good listen. And then disc two <coughs> has some epic surprises on it. Opens up with Pretending, which I'm not a big fan of, but the guitar playing is ridiculous and Clapton delivers just a absolutely completely makes the song worth it makes just brings you into the CD immediately um then we get bad love which I'm like eh, don't really like the song so again like the first CD the first two tracks are probably the weakest part but each of them has something that's like oh it's kind of worth checking out though um then we get a 13 minute version of old love and it is fantastic and i thought when i saw this 13 minutes right it's going to indulge into some like needless soloing and drums and bass and it's just gonna no it doesn't man it's just you get a nice jazzy piano solo you get guitar throughout the entire thing um leaning into that tyrone doo -doo 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 bass line throughout the whole thing old love that is a fantastic song that is a great late period Absolutely awesome. Uh, Robert Cray, Crow wrote it. Beautiful, beautiful song. This version is fantastic. Um, then we get Wonderful Tonight. And this Wonderful Tonight makes Wonderful Tonight completely tolerable and actually pretty good, kind of good. They kind of open it up with this little more jammy, loose opening before they go directly into the like, um, you know, the actual and it almost dilutes the saccharine sappiness of the whole thing um it's like a the beginning has this like i wrote deconstructed dire straight soft rock vibe and that deconstructed dire straight soft rock vibe before they get into the completely saves the song they go back into that at the end of it and it just it's kind of a good arrangement. It's kind of good. Kind of gives the song an extra different aspect. The, I think the verses are actually maybe slower and drawn out a little more. So it just maybe even feels bluesier. Yeah, this Wonderful Tonight, not a Wonderful Tonight fan. I don't ever skip this. I actually enjoy it. Um, Bell Bottom Blues, um, 
that original is so perfect. I always feel like maybe they don't ever quite, they just never quite get it live. Um, I think this is an orchestral version. Yeah, it is the orchestra version. Doesn't really do it for me. We don't really need this. Um, I just don't think all the extra bells and whistles that the orchestra is bringing really work on a bell-bottom blues. Um, we get Hard Times, a Ray, Ray Charles song. Nice piano playing. One of those sort of old type rock and roll numbers that not my, my thing with Clapton. Um, not a bad song, but a good performance. And then to close out the disc, to close out the set, we get the absolutely amazing Edge of Darkness from the Edge of Darkness soundtrack. It's an instrumental track. It's dramatic. It's dynamic. The guitar work is amazing. It goes really well with the sort of orchestral atmosphere that's being brought. Great song choice. Great selection. Great track. Not a perfect album at all, but... Some really, really good stuff, especially on disc two. Old Love, The Surprising Wonderful Tonight, The Edge of Darkness. Um, if you like that stuff from Journeyman, like Pretending and Bad Love and Running on Faith and those newer songs, you might like this more than me. I, I enjoyed this album a lot. Um, and The Badge, just check out Badge for that. It'll make you glad it's there because it's the best part of the song. That's number four. I've gone on too long. 24 Nights. Number three is live from Madison Square Garden. This is Eric Clapton and Steve Winwood, released in 2009, shows from 2008. There is nothing wrong with this album. It is absolutely fantastic. Um, I wish they had toured for decades. Um, that would have been amazing. Um, this is, uh, it's a healthy mix of Clapton and Winwood stuff. Uh, Winwood's on keyboards, he's on guitar, they jam together, they trade songs, they sound like they're having a great time. The set list is fantastic. Everything you want them to play, they play. There is not, this is a great, great release, a surprisingly strong release. Um, it, it's in the line, like it's not one of those like two artists who haven't played for decades have to get together and sparks are flying and things are crazy and they're challenging each other. No, man, it's two people who know how to put on a good show and are good at their instruments and have great songs and it's just fantastic. Two discs, um, nice going back and forth between stuff. Um, some of the highlights, like stuff like Forever Man sounds fantastic. It's got a good energy to it. One of the rare like Clapton songs that drops in there that's not a cover, that's not a like a Derek and the Dominoes or something else. Um, uh, Steve Winwood's uh, Split Decision off Back in the High Life is on here. That sounds fantastic. Has a really good energy about it. Um, but disc one, you get Had to Cry Today, Low Down, the J.J. Kale song, Them Changes, um, really nice, good, jammy blues energy on this whole album. Uh, Forever Man, Sleeping in the Ground, A Solid Presence of the Lord, Glad. Glad is a little slow at first and feels almost like they've, they've slowed it down, but then Clapton gets a really nice solo in that that's just absolutely really cool. Really nice, well, all right. Love that song. A uh, Double Trouble, Pearly Queen, which is fantastic. Tell the Truth. And then Disc One closes out with No Face, No Name, No Number. Really good version of this. Um, yeah, really, really like this version. Uh, then we get on the second side, we get an After Midnight, Split Decision, A Ramblin' on My Mind, which is solo Clapton Acoustic, Georgia on My Mind, which is solo, uh, I think he's on an organ. Um, Winwood doing that, sounds great. Um, we get a Little Wing, we get a monster voodoo child. And I think this is another one where I, it's 16 minutes and at some point I was expecting like, um, you know, a drum solo or some indulgent over the top, just like, hey, everybody's solos thing. But nah, man, like I think, I think Winwood gets a solo, Clapton gets a solo, they're going at each other. It's a really nice, they're not leaning really heavy into the, the Hendrix version of Voodoo Child. It's really, they're just um, kind of making it a Clapton version. Oh, am I making it like a blind faith version of it? Not a really large, boom, not a really heavy wah intro, just a really nice, let them seep in a slightly slower version of Voodoo Child that works perfect. Uh, they get a Can't Find My Way Home, a Dear Mr. Fantasy, and then we close out with a Cocaine. Just great songs, great track list, uh, really nice selection of songs, absolutely amazing. Um, the only reason it's a number three is because two and one exist. But yeah, I highly recommend this album. It, it I don't... Honestly, I don't think it has any right to be this good. It's a good album.
Yeah, that's my number three. Number two is Live at the Fillmore. This is a Derek and the Dominoes album that was released in uh, 1994. Uh, it's from the same shows that Derek and the Dominoes in concert. In fact, there's some of the same material that's on uh, Derek and the Dominoes in concert, uh, plus some tracks that were released on the first Crossroads box set, which was a mix of live and studio stuff and other stuff, um, which was a great box set. Um, but yeah, just Derek and the Dominoes performance. Uh, we don't have any Dwayne Allman, so it's just the, the four band members, Whitlock, Radle, Gordon, and Clapton. Um, the f there are four tracks that were not released previously. One of them is an alternate version of Why Does Love Got To Be So Sad, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, the track listing is in a different order, um, and it's in more in line with the way the actual show was. Um, I think in all their shows, it got to get better in a little while, opened, and then while why does love usually i think drop three or four songs later if i'm not mistaken um here they have got to get to open up the album um which is fantastic i think it's a great opener then they follow with why does love got to be so sad absolutely fantastic why does love got to be so sad i think it's about four or five minutes longer than the one that's on in concert and every single one of those seconds is worth it um and then we got uh key to the highway which was on the crossroads box set uh, we got blues power um, have you ever loved a woman? Both of those were on in concert. Uh, you have bottle of red wine. That's disc one. Disc two, you have a tell the truth, which is great. Love this song. We need more releases of this. This is one of those I could hear often and forever. Um, we get a nobody knows when you're down and out, which is maybe the one sort of okay moment of the show. They're not quite feeling this the way they're feeling everything else. Uh, that was previously unreleased. Um, we get the roll it over. We get the presence of the Lord. Uh, we get a little wing. Little wing feels a little raw. I think the story is that Hendrix had died a couple weeks earlier and or maybe a month earlier. And this was sort of a response to that. Um, there is a little bit of emotion in this. There's a little bit of a rawness to this performance. Um, kind of sloppy, but in a good, loose, raw way. And say raw a couple more times, raw. Um, we get a let it rain. Uh, there's a drum solo in this Let It Rain. It's about four minutes long. Whole thing's 19, 20 minutes. Some really nice after the drum solo. Clapton and the drummers kind of going back and forth, kind of playful at it. Drummer, Gordon Drummer, uh, attitude. Um, kind of a hesitant kickoff. It's not the most, da, na, 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 na. more of like, a, they kind of, like they kind of stumble into it, but it works really well for the way this song goes. Um, uh, I want to say it's just like Eric Clapton for a while, maybe playing it before the rest of the band drops in. Um, but yeah, really nice, well-played, jammed out, let it rain. Um, and then we get the Crossroads that had been released on the box set um, version of that. Um, yeah, just great. I mean, we need more Derek and the Domino stuff. It's, it's a shame this is all we have. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic. So love this release. Nothing wrong with it. One maybe okay moment. Nobody knows when you're down and out. That's the one thing I don't think is fire. The rest of this stuff is pretty fantastic. Um, and I really enjoy it. So yeah, that's my number two. Live at the Fillmore, Derek and the Dominoes. And my number one album, live album from the 90s and O's, Ots, is uh, Crossroads 2, live in the 70s. This came out in 96. It's all live material running from 74 through 78 with a handful, four studio tracks, one early in 74, three later in, in 78, I believe, right? They're all from 78. I don't really, yeah, from 78. Um, really only one of those I think is really, really like an, a pretty awesome performance, uh, but none of them are bad. And they're, they're kind of a neat way to just kind of kick off and, and close the set. They're the first track of the last three, um, but it's all live stuff from 74 through 78. Uh, some of this stuff had been released on uh, EC was here and you get remastered versions uh, plus different stuff from those performances, which have since been released on, I believe, the same recordings that were on Give Me Strength, Give Me the Strength, which I'll talk about in the next video um, as part of the EC Was Here expanded version. Things get complicated with the Clapton stuff. But yeah, disc one, all stuff from 74, fantastic. Have You Ever Loved a Woman, the Willie and the Hand Jive in to Get Ready, which one of my favorite just... That is just 12 minutes of some of the greatest, like, just 
just grooving ever. And Clapton's guitar playing between Willie and Get Ready, which is just like, meow, meow, just like these squiggles of grunts or something. It's awesome. Can't find my way home. A drift in blues into rambling on my mind. It's a lot of rambling on my mind on this box set. They're all fantastic. Presence of the Lord, rambling on my mind into Have You Ever Loved a Woman. We get a little wing. Then we get a The Sky is Crying into Have You Ever Loved a Woman into rambling on my mind. Yeah, the blues. Clapton is in and out of them. He's free flowing. He's calling shots. Hey, he's calling key changes. Great listens. Disc two is just darn near perfect. Layla. Straight up rock version. Not going to mess with any codas or anything like that. Further on up the road, epic I Shot the Sheriff. Just 10 plus minutes of I Shot the Sheriff. Epic badge. 10 plus minutes of badge. A drift in blues, which is just sort of like, almost like the center of this because you, it balances the two sides. Because after drift in blues, the second half of this is a 25 minute eyesight to the blind with a little percussion jam back into eyesight into why does love got to be so sad that's essentially an instrumental jam on that though so they do yell why does love got to be so sad for a brief while so you know what's going on and then they just ride that out and just jam that out and carlos oh, it's, oh and it's with carlos santana i forget to say that it's with carlos santana it is awesome carlos is playing eric's playing uh the eyesight to the blind is ridiculously good one of the best i mean absolutely amazing Dis three, tell the truth. We need more tell the truths. Knocking on heaven's door. Not a fan of that. Mm, I don't need it, but it's not going to hurt this set. Story Monday. Great lay down, Sally. Love this lay down, Sally. The core. Fantastic, the core. Uh, we're all the way. This is another one of those tracks. Um, I think there's another one on the on disc four where it's just like, it's three minutes. It's kind of a deep cut on an album. Something maybe you overskip because there's so many other heavy hitters on that album. And yet there it is. We're all the way. It's a nice little track, right? Nestled in on disc three. Absolutely love it. Cocaine, great version of cocaine. A going down slow, great version of going down slow. Into rambling on my mind. And then a mean old Frisco. And then disc four, loving you is sweeter than ever. This is another one of those one of those tracks that just like works so perfectly on this. Just exactly what we need. Uh, a worried life blues. Uh, a Tulsa time early in the morning. Um, a wonderful tonight. We don't need that. Kind hearted woman. Double trouble. Then we close out with the crossroads. And then the three acoustic tracks. To make somebody happy is the one I really like. That's the opening one. Um, and then we get a crying and a water on the ground, which are pretty good. Just great stuff. The performances are great. Clapton sounds amazing. Um, it's just fantastic. And that's my number one. And that's what they look like in writing right there. Um, really, those those top four are all pretty fantastic. 24 Nights is inconsistent, but I think if you like his, I think if you like Journeyman and you like some of those songs, you might like that release a lot more than I do. Um, I do think the badge kind of suffers though. Uh, but yeah, some really good stuff. Uh, Unplugged, I can never get into an EC's Rainbow concert. It was kind of disappointing. Those top three on the top, though, are just absolutely fantastic. His guitar playing is is, is great. Um, but yeah, that's what I got. Uh, let me know what you think of those albums, all that kind of stuff. If I miss something, if you're familiar with the other ones that he curated and you think those are worth checking out, I, I've not checked them out. There's been so much music that him curating stuff has not been something on my radar. I've always been focused on other things. But if it's worth the time, I'll check it out. But anyways, I might do it anyways, just because this is fun. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Leave your thoughts, all that kind of stuff. Subscribe, like, share, comment, do all those things. And man, go listen to Crossroads 2 if you have it. That's four CDs of Clapton at his peak. 70s, man. Some good stuff. That's all I got. Peace. Talk to you later. Uh, no, it's not. I got more. This is what they all look like um, if we combine the lists. Um, yeah. I have Crossroads 2 at the top. I, I've listened to that thing so many times. Uh, I almost always have one of those discs is usually in my car at all points in time. I still listen to discs. Um, yeah, but Live at the Fillmore, great. Um, Live at Madison Square Garden. Derek and the Dominoes drops to four only because of the repeat material. I still think Easy Was Here is fantastic. Um, On Tour with Clapton, such a great album. That Delaney and Bonnie. But yeah, yeah, that's, what I, that's, what, that's how I would rank them at this point. And I do think... I went back and forth on 24 Nights and One More Night, but like the weird stuff on 24 Nights, like that edge of darkness, the weirdness of Wonderful Tonight, um, kind of the white room sunshine stuff, I I, uh, 
I, I bumped it up right above One More Night, that those two were probably neck to neck. I think there's there's something exciting about 24 Nights that One More Night satisfies, but I don't know if it's exciting. 24 Nights is kind of exciting. All right, now I'm done. You've heard my spiel. Thanks for waiting those extra couple minutes or so. All right, peace. Talk to you later.